Decarbonising our energy system means more renewable energy. But can our national grid handle this increase in intermittent power? It's a question for AirGrid CEO Mark Foley. What's this, by the way? This is a pod. This is where you can come and work quietly or have a conversation oh, with... Um, Sound insulated. Great. Yeah, I can do carbon confessions here. Could you I? could. You could. <laughs> So, Mark, what are the biggest difficulties that you're going to face in this m massive transformation that we have to go under undertake? The Climate Action Plan is asking us to produce a power system in 2030 that has, on average, 70% renewables. Nobody in the world has done that. So we are heading into unchartered territory here. Globally, we know we have to transform yeah. energy very quickly. Yeah. Ireland is way behind. Have we got the time? Is it not a huge urgency? That we... There is a massive urgency. Yeah. There's 12 million tonnes of CO2 coming out of the electricity system today. Our job is to get that down to four and a half. And that radical change in terms of generation and the closure of peat plants, oil plants, and, and the likes of coal plants over the next number of years. So to do that, we have to connect 10 1,000 megawatts of renewables in the next 10 years. And 10,000, by the way, just even to take that. It's twice what we have today. We have to upgrade our grid because the grid as it currently stands can't handle this. So we have to do three things there. We have to upgrade, we have to add technology to the grid, and we have to build a new grid. We've got a strategy now that responds to that climate action plan. And it's to put in place the necessary infrastructure and building blocks to deliver green electricity and to be able to cope with the demand. Wind energy is Ireland's cheapest and most available source of zero carbon electricity. But the intermittency of wind energy is an added complication in providing reliable, on-demand power. Connecting to other grids helps with this problem, allowing us to buy and sell power instantly. We already connect to Scotland and Wales, and AirGrid is developing a new interconnector to France. All are critical to balancing our grid. But we also need local solutions. Here at Silver Mines in North Tipperary, an abandoned mine is one of them. This privately funded 650 million euro project will buy cheap excess renewable energy from the grid and sell it back at times of high demand. So the opportunity for this project in storage is to take that wind that is normally lost at night time and to pump it uphill, use that electricity to pump water uphill and store that electricity then for use later on during the daytime. Right, now where's the other lake going to be? You've got this, the lower lake, where are you going to place the other lake? Yeah, that's right. So the lower lake was actually formerly the open pit and when the mining operations ceased in the early 90s, um, it has since filled up with water and the upper reservoir then will be constructed at the top of the mountain, about 300 metres higher, um, and they will be connected then by a penstock and water would then will be pumped up at night time uh, through this penstock to fill the upper reservoir. By wind energy? By wind energy and during then the daytime when there's demand uh, water then would be released and would flow down the penstock into the turbines and generate electricity. It allows wind energy connected to the system carbon free and provides that reserve to the to wind but also to the whole uh, entire national power system. This isn't the first pumped hydro storage in Ireland. Turlock Hill in the Wicklow Mountains was built way back in the late 60s. But Silver Mines is unique. It repurposes a derelict industrial site, making it productive again. A vital storage facility to back up intermittent renewable power. I've come to County Loud to visit a local company that's trialling a product with the support of AirGrid and ESB networks to utilise excess wind energy at times of low demand. A solution? Using something most homes already have, hot water cylinders. So we're looking here at the national grid supply of wind and you can see here from 12 o'clock at night to 6 o'clock in the morning, there was a huge amount of wind. wind. Wind nearly made up the entire supply at night time. We can see this happening and there's a very good chance at these times there was wind turbines being switched off. We just had too much supply. So Klein would have been looking at technology where we take a million uh, hot water cylinders and we've mapped them out to see could we actually match this supply and give a demand for that supply of renewables. This yeah. represents all the devices. Yes, yeah, so you'd have one of these in every home, right. and it would show you how much hot water is in your tank, 
But if you were to roll this out into a million homes, those million homes could all just switch on at the exact time the renewables, the wind is blowing across the country. It's automated, so the customer doesn't have to sit there and try and figure out, should I switch on my hot water, should I switch on my heating system? The actual devices will all start switching on automatically, and as soon as the wind uh, tails off, the devices will start switching off again. Using hot water cylinders to utilise excess wind energy could help make our electricity greener, but may also provide a low-cost source of heat for homeowners. But what's involved in installing these devices in typical homes? I want to see for myself, so I've tagged along on a trial installation. So Eamon, I believe you're now ready to fit one of these in this old traditional house here. Ready to go now, we should be all done and dusted within an hour. Within an hour, all done fitted, right? Yeah. Well, I think I'll time you. Do you mind if I time you on it? Of course. Are you ready. ready to go now? Ready to go. Well, I'm going to time you now from this minute, right? Because you've just arrived, okay? Off you go. You're 13 and a half minutes. I'd be a lot slower, I can tell you that. Very good, so that's 24 minutes, but now you still have the immersion to do, do have you? Immersion to do yeah, okay. So is that it, Shane? That's it, I All done? Back up. Oh, very good. So 45 minutes, that's really good. Uh, within an hours of installation, we have a house now that's like ready to take as many renewables as possible. Such a simple process, but the benefits could be big for Irish homes to use cheap excess wind energy instead of being wasted, as it is today. Not only to store wind energy, but to enable homes to use excess wind energy as cheap heat in their cylinders. A century ago, this house wouldn't have had electricity. Now with modern technology, all of our houses could be enabled to switch from fossil fuel to renewable energy within this decade. With the addition of solar panels, there could come a day when an old rural house is a net producer of renewable energy. But in cities and towns, there could be an even better way of introducing carbon-free energy to our homes. In the Grand Canal Dock area of Dublin, a new project led by Codema and Dublin City Council aims to lower carbon emissions by changing the heat source of the entire community. Using a process called district heating. So district heating is basically how when we take large scale centralised heating sources um, such as these large power plants you see here in the Docklands, that's actually, um, people will call it smoke, but it's actually mostly steam. So what we do is redirect the waste um, heat from all of these power stations and these industries and pipe that into insulated underground pipelines, um, which we can then deliver into homes and businesses um, across the city. So all of these new buildings, including one we're standing in here now, can be connected to this digital energy system in the near future. Right. And I see here two, 343 megawatts of heat being wasted. Yeah, and that's just from data centres. So if we take into account power stations, wastewater treatment plants and other large industries like, um, say, breweries or other food industries, if we combine all of those heat sources together with ge deep geothermal resources we already have in Dublin, it's more heat than um, we would need in the whole Dublin area. So there's actually enough heat to heat more than one million homes My God. Um, already available. You're shocking me. Absolutely, that's incredible. And all of that is just presently just being wasted up into the atmosphere, warming the atmosphere. Absolutely. Ireland's modern economy demands ever greater amounts of energy. Recovering energy from these industries could provide heat for up to 70% of Dublin and other urban areas around the country. With a third of our CO2 emissions coming from heat, this is critical to hitting our 2030 targets and beyond. 
there is no one answer to powering our future sustainably. We can use the wind, sun, our rivers, and even our mountains. One day, we may harness the waves and tides, or use hydrogen to power our transport. But however we generate our power, it will need to be integrated and optimised to run completely free of fossil fuel. Ninety years ago, we faced a massive challenge here at Ardna Crosha. Now we face an even bigger challenge, weaning off complete use of fossil fuels. We need to be creative. We need buy-in from our government and all our political parties, our businesses, and of course, all of us citizens. <laughs>